Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I want to talk about the types of AI art that I've been seeing. I know a lot of us actual artists are quite fed up with AI art, and so I thought this would just be fun to talk about, because uh, I've definitely noticed some very specific trends. So first off, I wanted to start with the prevalence of this very specific type of OC that I see people trying to develop with like Mid Journey or that type of AI art. And for whatever reason, so much of the time, it's just like an anime schoolgirl in a semi-realistic style with like the full Sailor Fuku outfit, um, just the classic one you would think of literally first. Um, if you picture this in your head and then for whatever reason she has like a bad case of like toddler face I think it's because it's supposed to be anime character proportions combined with this semi semi-realistic style they just end up looking like way too young like like elementary school level or earlier um, and then on top of that they, they're always holding like a sword and the funniest part is they're usually like holding it wrong like holding the blade or their hands are like fully backwards um, <laughs> this type of OC is so funny to me because like it is interesting because you're getting to see like c the rendering that's like clearly stolen from artists like Sakimi Chen and like you know all of these like classic semi-realistic um, anime fan artists that really became popular in like the 2010s I would say um, that you know their work's been scraped for mid-journey and that kind of things and you're seeing that level of rendering applied to like a beginner artist's idea so it doesn't it looks like something that like someone would come up with when they're very early on their art journey but rendered really highly so um yeah this is the first type of ai art i feel like i see a lot um usually the body is pretty uncomfortable looking like the waist is just way too small and um her whole body is like really small but for some reason it's also like kind of curvy and hourglassy um and the pose is always just insane um I think it's easiest to pick apart this type of AI art by like pointing out the backwards hands or the, you know, just the weird posing or weird facial expressions. But I think at its core, the thing that I am most troubled by is not even the AI's mistakes, because I feel like even if all of these things looked right, you still would have to come up against the idea that like when this person sat down and like tried to make art that was going to um, replace real artists or whatever or you know is considered like this is the future all they could think of was an anime school girl with a sword <laughs> um, which like no disrespect to people who like that kind of thing but like it, it is like it feels like a very early um, idea you know and like as you spend your hours and hours developing your craft and practicing like you might come up with some stuff that's like a little bit more uh, unique specifically to you um, and yeah I also feel like there's a huge prevalence with stuff that looks like it's like straight off of wallpaper engine like I feel like a lot of AI art I can detect it before I even look close at it by the fact that it has like a just like a weirdly generic high anime style I am going to talk about some ways that you can protect your art from being scraped by uh, these AI software um, later in the video, so uh, if that is something that's concerning you, know that there are things that you can do to protect your work. Alright, um, before I get into this next type, I'm going to tell you a story from my childhood, and you can decide how it connects to this type. Um, so when I was in first grade, we went to the computer lab to learn how to type. During this time, a boy in my class started crying and was sent to the principal's office. I didn't know what had happened, um, but I came to find out that the reason he was in so much trouble was because he had typed exactly these words into Google image search. Sexy lady, naked. Now, um, <laughs> moving right along, this next type of AI art is the weird amalgamates of um, various what looks like Sports Illustrated models, kind of like a Hugh Hefner dream, um, <laughs> where it's just like a girl um, with like too smooth of a face and uh, she's like an uncanny valley pinup. Uh, usually she's just in a very like normal boring bathing suit um, and her body proportions are just really extreme. Uh, this is pretty realistic looking like stylistically wise. I think it's supposed to look like a real human person which does fit these right into the uncanny valley um, and they do usually have kind of like One Piece woman uh, proportions, but without the anime style to sort of cover how 
weird it looks. So they usually have like a completely caved in rib cage um, and just like a, a very intensely hourglassy figure. Um, they're usually missing like hip bones. They just sort of smoothly go out to like, uh, you know, rather large hips. Um, and these are the pictures a lot of the time where I feel like the AI artist is missing some crucial uh, details, like sometimes these girls will have extra fingers, or um, if there's like multiple of them close together and they like have their uh, arms around each other's shoulders, like sometimes they'll just be arms and hands that just appear where they do not belong. Um, I feel like because the purpose of these images is to be like sexy that I think a lot of people miss, um, you know, the too many rows of teeth and that kind of thing, which do make these pinup girls kind of iconic in their um, sort of subtle horror uh, influence. There is something, um, I guess, good about this in the fact that usually these creations are not stealing from artists, but instead are stealing from photos of real human beings, which um, is also bad, I think. <laughs> Uh, like I said before, you know, there are some things you can do when you upload photos to the internet. I'm going to try and have a link in the description, this is not a sponsor or anything like that, uh, to this project where you can potentially protect your uh, art or photos, um, and it can even potentially like poison data sets if someone tries to scrape your image. I think that if this ends up working, this could be a really beneficial way for artists and just any human being who doesn't want to be part of mid journeys like scam um, to, uh, you know, to put a little wrench in their system and fight back a bit. Um, because right now they're in a legal gray area and it'll probably be a while before what they're doing is fully illegal. Um, so uh, in the meantime, uh, we might have to do these little band-aid uh, techniques. Uh, so yeah, please feel free to check that out and read up on that and see if that might help you. This next type is very different from the other two I've discussed, and this one is more likely to be sent to you from a well-meaning female relative, and that is the uh, prevalence of animals that are just a little too cute and you look closer and realize that they're completely AI generated. Um, a lot of the times in like a thumbnail or whatever, they will look pretty real. Um, and it's not until you open up the picture and look closer that you realize that it's like some kind of, they essentially want you to believe that it's like a baby fox that's so small that it can like stand on a mushroom or a lily pad or something like that. And they they usually have like, you know, just, just too beautiful of a coloration. Their eyes are a little too big and liquidy and shiny and cute. Um, and their little muzzles are too small and generally these images are, are very adorable, but um, I feel like a lot of, you know, aunts and grandmas and moms are sending these on Facebook and do not realize that they're sending people fake images. They think that these are real animals. It almost reminds me of um, a Tumblr myth that went around when I was a teenager. I believe it's called Alexandria's Genesis. Um, it was basically this myth uh, that there was a disease that gives you purple eyes and makes all your leg hair fall off. Um, I think the wishful thinking carries you through the uncanny valley and causes people to believe that a creature this cute exists because they want it to. Um, another signature tell that what you're looking at is not in fact a real animal is um, if there's like weirdly sparkly water drops. I don't know what it is, but I feel like the people who make these like fake cute animal pictures love having like a sparkly light catching dew drop somewhere in the uh, photo or too bright or pink and purplish of a sunset. These are all things that I think fall into more of like the Facebook book sphere of AI like scammy image um, whereas uh, yeah the ones that I talked about before are more you, you see the problems in the posing and that kind of thing not usually the issue uh, when it comes to these little critters um, but while they are uh, kind of cute, I do feel like they definitely help spread misinformation about animals. Um, and, you know, Facebook, I feel like, is is such a gnarly place for misinformation already and dropshippers and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely wasn't excited to see that there was a new confusing thing going on um, on Facebook. Uh, I definitely don't use that website anymore, but I know a lot of people still do, especially older generations. So uh, this one's a bit of a bummer, I feel like. 
like, even though um, sometimes the creations are certainly very interesting looking. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure we all wish that there were like puppies that were as small as, you know, your palm or whatever. Um, I guess there are when they're really little, but anyway, I digress. Next up, I don't know what to call this other than like creative uh, style or like um, the <laughs> the simulacrum of imagination. Um, but you'll you'll know what I mean when I describe it more. Uh, I feel like this is actually one of the most common types of AI generated image when you're talking about like quote unquote AI art, or if you're seeing articles about the merits or problems with AI art, this is what's gonna pop up. And it's usually like a conventionally attractive girl um, looking either directly at the viewer or like off to the side with no specific facial expression, nothing, you know, no extreme feelings or emotions, just sort of placidly looking back at the viewer. And then there'll be like swirls around her. Sometimes they're kind of Art Nouveau, Alphonse Mucha type swirls. Other times it's more like psychedelic coloring book kind of vibe, but there will be swirls and spirals around her, probably in a rainbow of different colors. And then um, if you wanna go for like the full bingo, um, you'll also need some kind of animal in the background, like an owl or a wolf or a coyote or something. And I think the whole purpose of this type of image is to give off the impression of something really like creative and imaginative. But if you ask the person who generates these images what this is supposed to mean or be communicating, they're not going to be able to tell you. Um, I think at best, this type of image um, could be described as like, you know, it's the, the animal and the swirls and stuff, it's a representation of her quirky and wild spirit. Um, but despite saying that, you'll notice that like she doesn't actually look wild at all. She looks like she's holding her face perfectly still so that she can be um, as like conventionally attractive as possible and, and not be like stretching her face at all. Um, honestly, I... <laughs> I have total disdain for this, um, which should be pretty clear, I guess. The reason that um, I am still not really worried about AI art, and I know that there's so many people who are, and I really do feel for anyone who's feeling stressed about this, um, because like I, I do see people, I see corporations using AI art, and that's definitely a problem. Um, but I think still at this point, um, typically, it's not going to be able to replace any job that you would actually want, um, right? Because in the, at the end of the day, like AI is doing like pattern matching and just like trying to make something close to the thing that you directly described, but it's not going to be able to do anything deeper. And typically when you're working as an artist or a designer, it's that deeper stuff that you're actually getting hired for. It's not like your rendering skills necessarily. Um, and this is something that we went over a lot actually in art school. Um, it's something that I think when you're a beginner artist, like you are so fixated on trying to get your art to look the way that you picture it in your head and you're very stuck on like that like direct visual aspect but you'll come to realize as you get farther along in your career that your ability to com like communicate something more complex is actually the most important part of your process and that's why um, I don't think it's time for anyone to be really worried or giving up on their dreams um, and I hope that that brings you some comfort if this is something that's been worrying you. I hope you guys had fun with this video. Uh, it was just for a bit of a laugh um, and to tell you guys about some techniques you can use to protect your art. Um, please let me know the most insane thing you've seen in an AI generated image and I will see you in the next one. A huge thank you to all of my patrons, including Grexius, Olia, Liddy Savior, Roro, Rayons, Vorpal Matt, Brandon Stark, CB, Crosby F, Lucy Amajiki, Liv Liv, Salty Jack Rabbit, Ravens Crow, Zocelot, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Kadaria, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Subaki, Cutie Pie, Rune Raincrow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.